Under a wide blue sky, we accelerated onto the interstate, hurtling along at 75 miles an hour, with zero visibility from this second to the next. Kids are never meant to touch the ground, but soar, and so elation takes them, discarding all that weighs them down, and for a very little while, it gives them wings. In the deepest pockets of imagination are places so remote and so unreachable that even in this broken-hearted world, the unscathed soul survives and shines. Our quantum priests, for all their math and lenses, have not yet seen the thought, the hope, the dream. They have not watched the watcher watching, nor glimpsed the solitary ghost in the machine. We are born already knowing how to hold our breath and turn and turn in water, slowly dancing. Within us still, an underwater kind of buoyant grace that draws us ever longing to the sea. Even in our sleep, unfurling, we spiral past a thousand little endings, hurrying towards whatever lies in wait for us just out of sight along the curve. On Sunday morning's bench, she is a slender, dark-haired poem sprung to life, who, reading to herself beneath the gentle trees, has dressed herself in Emily Dickinson blue. How surprising you have always been to me, impatiently shaking the world by its shoulders, so wide awake and wise to all the propaganda. Yet here you are all these years later, still wanting to believe, still arguing, and still in love with this imperfect, impossible world. And what is grace but clemency unearned that falls upon the wounded heart as warm and clean as summer rain? Adrift no place to call your own, no place to rest or even linger, scowled at by strangers and sleeping on hard streets. Without asking, I took this picture of your ruin and disgrace and did not wake you because I too am guilty. I too, my brother, cast you out. Port Townsend, as elegant and out of date as a pair of silk gloves. A woman of a certain age. Her skirts of wild as she roams the summer burned fields. She is a woman with a past. I've seen her brooding eyes turn darkly gray, as cold as Admiralty Inlet in the winter light, while skiffs Trawlers and catches ride hard to anchor in the advancing blow. But if you'll let her, she will steal into your restless mind with the spreading warmth of wine or firelight and brand her dreaming soul upon your own. So that when you wake each morning, you are less and less inclined to leave.
Above the circle of the sea and floating on the wind, these cirrus wings, unzipped skywide and soaring, forever blurred and blue, forever prisoner of a lens. The sand, hard packed and smooth as glass, has taken prisoner all things horizontal as the tide withdrew, acquiring every perfect skipping stone. Anyone can read the message scrolled across the sky that soon a softer air will blunt the knife-edged wind and eagles soar again in sunlit arms of afternoon. Over the debris of other centuries, we build our shacks and citadels, and living our beleaguered lives, we somehow fail to see how dust that settles in the folds of everything is patiently reburying the ruins at Pompeii. Slipping through a morning window, sunlight casts its first shy trembling nets of light. No one here to interrupt the early quiet of my kitchen. The utter stillness of this tranquil day. Still tangled in dreams, I stand in an open doorway. Dreaming the gentle dreams of kindly trees, waiting for springtime in the house of leaves. Under a summer sky, all asphalt and angles and echoes. Hushed and cool and smelling of the sea, the fog steals ghostly through the trees. No sound except the calling of a bird that sounds as lost as me. Not all endings are regrettable. Patterned light that breaches broken walls can shimmer like a song. Imagining the bliss, the zoom, the plunging loops, the whirling fall, the blur of rising as if he'd had the money to buy a ticket, as if the shining day would never end. He follows, and in following, comes to know the restlessness of standing in another's shadow, the fragile infallibility of fathers, the strange wistfulness of autumn light, the certainty of being deeply love. From the area of a windowsill, she leans out into the world, considering the possibilities. The eye of the beholder is both its frame and its creator. Because you looked back over your shoulder just then.
this place, so dazzling, bright, and summer blind, how can I resist the exhilaration of such a morning, or the silly shower songs that you invent to make me laugh? Old men dreaming of their immortality send the young to die for it. Such hubris in a drooping rag of cloth, such paper tiger dreams at so obscene a price, such chilling lies. The time has come for me to let life drop into my hand one slow penny at a time. We are so guarded, so cloaked in our own particularity, and so this metaphor this anecdotal evidence of our passage side by side by side and somewhat blindly through parallel lives. Light lingers on summer evenings, making fair weather promises to sailors, setting the mountains aglow for hours. A wash in that floating light, I believe I could be happy in this moment forever. But darkness, when it falls, feels final. Sometimes, in the cold December light, I have the sense my outward journey's almost done. And then the thrill of undiscovered places is lost to me, and every road points homeward. Time, a tireless worker, reliable and unhurried, is beauty's gentle ally, softening the edges of perfection into something more wonderful and well-loved. I am up before daylight to watch the mist emerge from darkness, to wonder at the soft blue light that cannot last. Allowed to choose, I'd make this pebbled shore remote and wild the last I see.